Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and welcome back to what I'm playing. I have a really special treat for you today. We are playing The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the remake, exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. This game is a phenomenal game, and I want to break it down in much detail why. This is going to be a bit longer than normal episode of what I'm playing, usually around 10 to 15 minutes. This one's close to a half hour because I have a lot to talk about with this game and with the Zelda series in general because I'm a huge fan of the Zelda series. Uh, one of my favorite game franchises of all time. Ever since I was a little kid, this is a story I want to kind of go back to. Uh, I was a big fan of Contra. I really loved Contra. I don't remember exactly where I played it. I think I originally played it in the arcade and then at a friend's house. And I wanted my own copy of Super C because I had the original Contra and Super C was coming out. And I begged my parents to get me a copy of Super C. And they never did that. Unfortunately, I had to play that game at a friend named Josh's house um, in order to experience that game. But I did get something that I did not expect that blew my mind and is one of the best games ever released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. So, a few days later, after I was supposedly wanting to get Super C and never did, uh, my dad, he, um, bless his heart, you know, he recently passed away. And, uh, you know, so it's, it might take me a moment, but, uh, anyways, he, um, did like some kind of odd job or something like that for a friend. And one of the ways that they, they paid him was he actually gave him some Nintendo cards. Uh, there was actually like a little box of, I think, eight different cartridges. And one of them was a nice, fancy gold cartridge. As many of you know, that gold cartridge, of course, is the original Legend of Zelda. This is a game I was... <sighs> I want to say I was around 7 or 8 at the time. I don't remember what my exact age was at the time. I guess it probably would have been 8. Or at least close to 8. At least if we go by when Super C was released. It was like 1990. And, um... Yeah, I mean, this was a game that... You know, I've heard good things about it, of course. I was a Nintendo Power subscriber. Um, I've seen, like, the things in Nintendo Power and whatnot. But... I, I don't know. I'm not sure why I wasn't really drawn to this game. I wasn't really into RPG type games. They were still pretty new at that time. I did previously play Dragon Warrior, which is now known as Dragon Quest. That was my first introduction to an RPG type game. And it was a pretty interesting game. But Legend of Zelda took it to another level, which obviously nowadays a lot of people don't consider it an RPG because it doesn't have some of the basic tenets like the number crunching with experience points and random battles and you know all that good stuff that we typically associate with those types of games. But it does something that a lot of games that were considered RPGs of those times didn't really do a very good job of, and that's it presented a adventure in a very organic way. You know, it gave you like kind of a base little quest of what you're doing and it kind of let you explore the world from there. You didn't have a lot of narrative or anything like that to rely on like you did in games like Dragon Warrior or Final Fantasy to give you like a lot of hints on what to do. There were some hints, of course, but it was a little bit of a cryptic experience. And it took a lot of uh, time to kind of figure things out. Now, once, of course, you know the game, it only takes a couple of hours to beat, you know. The original Legend of Zelda is not a long game, mind you, but... It took people a long time back then because they had to figure it out fresh. We didn't have the internet or anything like that. And even with you, if you had Nintendo Power, you know, you had to wait until the next issue sometimes in order to get hints on the next dungeon or something like that. So that, so some of these games literally took weeks or even months for people to beat just because they got stuck and they weren't sure what to do. Um, and this was, of course, the era of talking with your friends at school and sharing tips and secrets for games and things like that. It was a phenomenal time. Something that generations today aren't really privy to anymore. 
because we have instant access to everything thanks to the internet and whatnot. Uh, but ever since playing that game, I've been a huge fan of Legend of Zelda. Uh, I would have to say that my favorite games in the series um, were Link's Link to the Past, of course. Uh, that's a game I played over and over on the Super Nintendo. Loved it even more than the original Zelda. And uh, most recently, of course, Breath of the Wild, which does a lot of great things with the 3D Zeldas. It is my favorite 3D Zelda in the series. Now, Link's Awakening is not one I've ever played before because I didn't own a Game Boy or a Game Boy Color. My introduction to Nintendo handheld gaming, at least in a proper sense, was a Game Boy Advance. And for that matter, other than Link's, Link's to the Past, I didn't play any Zelda games on there. You know, of course, I had to play Link's to the Past because that's that's my favorite. That's my absolute favorite. But um, this was a game that saluted me. I know there are a lot of people out there, though, that really swear up and down about Link's Awakening. And whenever I heard Nintendo was doing this remake for the game, I just had to get on board. I had to check this game out for the very first time. And uh, it was just a wild ride. I do apologize for a little bit of the video feed getting slightly choppy. I apologize about that. Um, but uh, anyways, I want to kind of go back to this, of course. Whenever I saw the announcement, it really took me back to another time with the Legend of Zelda series when we had... Um, now, this is not the game, mind you, but again, I want to remind you, this is the video feed. Unfortunately, uh, the video got kind of choppy for some reason. I think it's because I changed my encoding settings or whatever. Uh, but do bear with it just for a little bit. It's not going to last for too long. Um, so anyways... Whenever I saw this, I saw a lot of people kind of having the same complaints that they had about the Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which was on the GameCube. Uh, because if you remember back in that time, uh, whenever the GameCube was first announced, they were talking, of course, about... Um, I guess you could just pretend this is like a nice little picture slideshow <laughs> kind of thing going on here since, uh, you know, it's it's been kind of going if, off and on with the video feed. Uh, but anyways, I keep rambling and skipping topics. So, Wind Waker, you know, back in Space World 2000, that's when they unveiled the Nintendo GameCube, and they showed that amazing-looking demo of the next generation of Legend of Zelda, uh, obviously going for more of a graphical style comparable to, like, Link to the Past or other similar games like that, but it was completely different in that experience and when it came to it you know when we saw the wind waker a lot of people myself included were pretty upset about this direction that they had for the game and you have to just take a look and you have to kind of figure out why we were mad about this because it seemed like nintendo didn't really understand what the Legend of Zelda was about, at least to us. It did, they didn't really understand what it was about, and it really upset us, you know. And that's why a lot of people were very adamant against Link's Awakening. So keep that in mind. And I've seen a lot of people having this same kind of sentiment with this when they first saw this because of the graphical style. Um, it's got a very unique graphical style. It almost looks like toys in a way. Like the characters like Link, for example, looks kind of like a pop figure. And so I know some people don't really care for those kinds of things. And I can see why that would put them off. But after actually playing the game, seeing it in motion, uh, just seeing how everything looks. I mean, this is a visually breathtaking Zelda game. This is definitely one of the best looking Zelda games that I've seen. Um, you know, besides, of course, games like Breath of the Wild and now the Wind Waker, you know, because even though I was originally not a fan of the visual style of the Wind Waker, I am a huge fan of it now. I really enjoy that cell shaded look. And it's really weird because I have enjoyed cell shaded games before, of course, like uh, Jet Set Radio or Jet Grind Radio, as it was called here in the States. You know, I really enjoyed the visual style of that game. But for some reason, I could not accept Zelda having that kind of style, uh, which is just a hypocritical stance to take. But gladly, I have 
matured and saw the air of my ways, and I love the style of that game now. And as a matter of fact, I much rather would play something like that than Twilight Princess, for example, which I know a lot of people like Twilight Princess, but it has just kind of a boring look to it. You know, it looked like they just graphically enhanced Ocarina of Time and added, like, some dull-looking bloom effects and whatnot. It just was not very appealing-looking. So, now, Link's Awakening. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this actual game. So, as you see right here, this game actually has a really cool feature where you can make your own dungeons, which finally answers the question about when and where are we going to get a Zelda Maker? It is right here, people. Now, it does have a lot of limitations. This is not Super Mario Maker. You're not going to be able to craft nearly endless possibilities like you can with that game. You do have a set of rooms that you can place in order to set your map up. Each room, of course, sometimes have different parameters, like enemies that they're going to be in that room, uh, treasure chests, stairs, doors that you have to unlock. Um, so they have these parameters that are set. Basically, you look at the image of the room. I wish there was a way that you could actually zoom in on the image so you can see it in more detail because some of the sprites and things like that on here look very small. It's a little bit difficult to tell uh, what exactly is in that room. But that being said, this is a really neat feature that I've been spending a lot of time on, actually. Um, I, you know, even though I beat this game, you know, I've still been playing it for a few hours or so, just messing around with this mode and kind of going through these things. And what's really interesting about it is you make these dungeons and then you have to play through them uh, to completion. You know, it's a really cool little scenario and you get to unlock rewards and things like that in the game. You unlock heart pieces and the seashells so you can, you know, get upgrades and whatnot, of course. I got almost all the seashells. Uh, I think I missed like three or four. Um, but that's something I'm gonna have to worry about later because uh, my time with this game is pretty much done at this point. You know, um, I need to move on to another game, but I enjoyed my time immensely with this game so don't get that wrong just because i'm selling my copy doesn't mean that i have any problem with this game at all it's fantastic i highly recommend it a lot of people of course have concerns about is it actually worth a full 60 dollar price tag i think it is at least maybe if you're fresh to the experience like i am maybe if you've already played the original link's awakening it, well, even then, if you play the original, like, practically everybody I've talked to that played the original Link's Awakening, like, at least in depth and not just in kind of passing, just to try to get a base understanding of the game, almost everybody I've talked to um, says that this is one of their favorite Zelda games, if not their favorite. You know, I know I have seen a lot of people say that this is their favorite Zelda game, and I'm maybe I need to go back and play... Um, the Game Boy or Game Boy Color version to see how it compares because uh, I am kind of curious you know but from what I understand it's uh, very similar <laughs> you know like obviously the maps the dungeons uh, the solutions the puzzles that kind of stuff is all the same uh, from what I understand going from game to game and you know you are going to get of course the much improved graphics the much improved music of this version um, you're going to get a better view, of course. You're not going to have to worry about going from screen to screen type scrolling because, like, when you're in the overworld, it's a seamless experience. There is no, like, map to map scrolling. It's just, it's all there, you know, and you can explore it. Now, they did preserve that for the dungeons, of course, and I can understand why they did, you know, because it kind of adds a little bit of that mystery to the dungeon like obviously if you're able to see what's in the next room before you even go in there well it kind of like drops some of that suspense so i understand why they did it for that particular um type of game style but for the most part you know it's a fully seamless world which is really nice you know it wouldn't have made a lot of sense to make it exactly like it was Back then, of course, here I screw up on this puzzle <laughs> because we have modern technology that can 
immensely improve the quality of life for the game players. So I'm glad that they did that. But at the same time, they kept to the traditions that the original gamers, how you doing, Magus X1, um, that the original gamers can appreciate as well. So this is the game that both the fans of the original and people that are completely new to it can enjoy. Uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely. I don't know exactly where I would place it in terms of my favorite Zelda games. I'm not sure I'm ready to answer that question quite yet, but it is a phenomenal game, guys. It really is. And I do think it's worth the full price. And hey, if you don't think it is, the good news is since it's a Nintendo published title and it's got Zelda in the name, the resale value is going to be killer. So, you know, you're going to be able to get practically all of your money back, if not all of it back. Um, on the used market after selling it, you know, if you want to buy a physical copy. Obviously, you might have to uh, consider it if you more like digital gaming, of course. You know, digital games are great, of course, but that's one of the caveats that you do have to consider. So if you are concerned about the pricing, I would probably just pick it up physically and then just sell your copy. You know, like, the game's not that long of a game. I think it took... I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 or so hours for me to beat this game. I don't I don't know, have an exact account, unfortunately, because the game's still that recent in my Switch library that doesn't even tell me what my playtime is. You know, like when you first get a game, it'll say first played however many days ago. It's still in that phase. That's how recent this game is, you know. And um, so I can't give you like an exact number, unfortunately. And unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you either on that because for some reason, they just think, oh, you know what? Instead of giving you that information, we'll just tell you when you had your save file, which is still relevant information, mind you, especially if you want to kind of remember when you last played a game and whatnot. But it didn't really help in this scenario, so I can't really answer that. But I've heard people that are experts in the original game say it takes them like two or three hours <laughs> to beat this game. And I can see that, of course. I, I'm sure that's not trying to go and find all the heart pieces or any of that kind of nonsense. That's probably just trying to get the bare necessities to beat the game. But, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. It's definitely a shorter game, at least if you know what you're doing. And if you don't, you're going to have plenty of time to uh, mess around with it. And with the addition of that custom dungeon mode, it really it really adds a lot to the package you know you, you like i said i've been playing that for several hours uh getting a lot of good times out of that and uh you know i might go ahead and after i'm done recording this video i might go ahead and make a couple more dungeons you know some of the more complex levels and see how those are because it would be a lot of fun really to mess around with that you know especially since i had just unlocked the um wall hand thing or whatever it was uh which you're actually i think about to see here oh, whoops i guess i shouldn't have spoiled that <laughs> uh, but anyways yeah link's awakening highly highly recommended if you're not a nintendo switch owner yet but you like the zelda games what are you doing with your life <laughs> you know we have two fantastic zelda games obviously one of them was on the wii u Yes, but now we have a Switch exclusive, at least of this particular version of the game, uh, Zelda game. So it's it's a no-brainer now for you. You know, definitely pick this up immediately. Now, for anybody that's never played a Zelda game, not a bad time to get started. You know, it really isn't. This is a good one to start with, of course. Or you can start with my personal favorite, Link to the Past. It's on Switch Online, so you really don't have an excuse. You can pirate the game if you really want to. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's an old game now. Nintendo's got plenty of money. I don't recommend that personally because I think it's worth money. I think it's worth a Switch Online price at least. You know, 20 bucks a year. You get a whole bunch of NES and SNES games. Just play them, guys. It's a good time. It really is. Here we go. I'm getting my awards. You can unlock these little chamber pieces as you're playing through the game in order to uh, build out more dungeon stuff. There's a few more chamber pieces that I guess I'm missing, I guess. I, I don't know for sure. 
But yeah, there's a lot to do with that. Now, I do have a downside with that, at least from what I've seen. There doesn't appear to be a way to share levels with other people. If there is, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, I couldn't see it in the menu or anything like that. So I don't know what's up with that. That obviously would have added at least a little bit more to the experience. Maybe if I beat all these dungeons, then it'll let me share the dungeons. I, I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on. Possibly. But um, that would have been really cool to see. And obviously for this type of feature, it would have been cool. Like, obviously I get they have to have certain caveats in order to make sure that the dungeons are passable and whatnot. But it just would have been nice to have a little more control over the dungeon designs. Like, say, maybe the rooms. Instead of having the rooms just be all these prefab things um, that we're able to just choose the different type of rooms that we want. And then we can place, like, manually place, like, enemies and locked doors and things like that. And then, of course, the game can still have its requirements that you have to fit in order to beat the level. You know, so... You can kind of get a lot more out of that experience, a lot more in depth. They could still have the prefab stuff for people that just want to slap something together, you know, and play through it real quick. That's great, you know, but it just it would have added a lot more to the experience between that as well as sharing those with your friends, and even setting various parameters like when you're in that dungeon, you have these items, and then you can get this item to help navigate further into the dungeon like say you want to add a hook shot mechanic or something like that like obviously whenever you do these prefab dungeons at least at the phase that i'm at in the game i have everything so there's not really any kind of set challenge like that really for that you know i can just kind of own <laughs> you know and just kick butt so but i mean this game's a uh, straight up 10 it really is you know i mean it's just an all-around package. You know, there's not a lot to complain about. I would say the biggest complaint I have about this game is, for some reason, there is a little bit of a frame rate issue. It's not significant. It doesn't make the game unplayable or anything like that. And it seems to only be an issue in the overworld. But it is definitely noticeable, especially when you're cutting grass. I don't know why. I guess because of all the sprite effects associated with that. But you can see noticeable frame rate dips that do detract from the experience somewhat. It's just not bad enough for me to knock the game off any points, you know. Because, let's be real, there's no such thing as a perfect game. So whenever I say something's a 10 out of 10, that doesn't mean it's perfect, okay? That just means that it's top notch. It is a masterful game in its genre of games and... It's a good time, you know. There's, like I said, you know, other Zelda games are 10 out of 10s for me as well. So, you know, I'm not, like I said, it's not really a relevant measure, like, that it's the best game ever or anything like that. But it is definitely something that I recommend any gamer to play. You know, except for, well, I guess maybe not any gamer. Maybe there's Call of Duty Madden Bros that only care about those two games. They might not get that much out of it, but, you know, hey, maybe they would actually get a lot of it out of it if they just tried it, you know, because there is a lot for this to offer. Um, I guess I do have one other complaint, though. The game does get a little bit cryptic by the standard. Now, I do understand, of course, that this was an original Game Boy game, and so that was a little bit more of a thing for the Zelda series back then, but it, at least I considered it more cryptic than Link to the Past which came out before this, mind you. So it was a little bit tricky. I had to look up a walkthrough a couple times to get through some things, you know. There's just some things I didn't understand. As a matter of fact, at the very beginning of the game, um, I did get kind of spoofed a little bit because there were these blocks that I didn't understand that I actually, actually could push them. There didn't seem to be like any real indication that it could because usually Zelda games, blocks that you can push have a very noticeable graphic to them. And these blocks didn't. They looked like regular rocks. They were looked like things that I could bomb, if anything. But I was able to push them. And that's how I was able to progress, obviously, is whenever I just stumbled upon that. 
You know, before then I was like completely stuck. And I was like, oh shit, I need to probably work look at a walkthrough. I don't know where I need to go even. <laughs> but then I just kind of stumbled upon them like, oh, you're kidding me. I was able to push these the whole time. The game didn't give me like any kind of clue to that, of course, you know, because I just wasn't used to that. Um, so yeah, it is a little bit cryptic. You might have to look up a walkthrough if you're not um, really very versed in these games. So that's something to keep in mind. Um... I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really want to touch on with this game. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, it's just a fantastic game all around. And bear in mind, of course, even though I did say it was a little bit cryptic, the game does have a lot of good quality of life improvements. It has a very good map system so you can see where you've been, where you kind of need to go, and that kind of stuff. Not like checkpoints, mind you, but you can at least, you know... Like if a NPC says go to this mountain or whatever, you can identify where that mountain is on the map. It'll tell you the name of the mountain and all that good stuff. So very easy to kind of figure out. There are some notes and things like that that you can look through as well. So you can kind of figure things out. There is the owl that helps out immensely, of course. The owl will tell you all kinds of cool things. Yeah, just, I mean... If you like these kinds of games and you haven't picked it up yet, what are you doing with your life? Seriously. Uh, you should have stopped watching this video and bought this game physically or digitally and start playing. You know. And maybe you will now uh, that we're wrapping up this what I'm playing for Link's Awakening. So, till then, Dal Phoenix out.